so let's talk about this neutrality, yeah. okay? Because I, I think I mentioned this when I was speaking earlier that I was I just assumed uh, I would come to Wikipedia and I could get the truth, right? And that's kind of what people expect they're getting from media to some extent. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but but. When I read, I remember reading when I saw some of your work, you know, maybe a half year ago or before that, no, actually, in fact, the vision wasn't the objective truth. The vision was neutrality. Yeah. And that's different somehow. So, so explain that to me. Well, the difference between neutrality and objective truth as aims of pieces of writing is that the objective truth is generally um, something that people disagree about. I personally think there is an objective truth about any clearly defined question, right? And it would be absolutely wonderful to have a reference work that contained all and only objective truth. That would be fantastic. But the problem is that um, no two people will ever agree about what such a work should contain. Neutrality, on the other hand, is an attempt to explain all the different points of view on a subject with sufficient detail, with sufficient concern about the, the evidence and citations and the detail needed for a person to make up his own mind on any issues of controversy. So just imagine that you are a Wikipedia editor and you're looking at a mess of an article. You have the option of um, correcting it in a way so that it reflects what you think is the objective truth, basically giving a catalog essentially, but a, a well-ordered catalog of views. Um, if you go with the first notion, you're going to anger a lot of people in your community if you have a very wide-ranging community, right? And you probably should because you are presuming to decide the facts for them, right? Now, and that's a problem. The more that we write articles that tout a single point of view, the more that our writing resembles uh, propaganda, especially to the people who don't have that point of view. The function of propaganda is to, as it were, beat people over the head to get them to believe the way that you want them to believe. Not necessarily for good reasons, because good reasons are always informed by and often in response to other points of view, right? You can't ultimately have really good reasons to believe something if you haven't considered other points of view. So propaganda has the tendency of making people stupider and, um, and less objective. So if you want to approach a subject from an objective point of view, what you need is a neutral piece of writing. Well, okay, that's fascinating. And I, this, is, this is a great explanation that I think is, I'm going to be using myself. You have said that the currently Wikipedia contains the establishment point of view. Mm -hmm. And so, and wh what does that mean exactly? Well, um, we can see by reading the New York Times and the Washington Post and watching broadcast news and reading the books that are touted by the you know, New York Review of Books and whatever, that uh, there are certain things that powerful people, in many cases well-educated people, want us to believe that minorities or, or, or what, what those people want to believe are minorities of people disagree with. So that's the establishment view. It's the view that is touted by the powerful. I guess the big question is, yeah. how did that happen? Because uh, as far as I know, um, this 
neutrality policy is still in effect? Yeah, um, we introduced the neutrality policy before Wikipedia was even conceived of, and then Wikipedia inherited it from Newpedia. Wikipedia made a real effort at neutrality for, I would say, its first five years or so, and then it became, well, it began a, a long, slow slide into what I would call uh, leftist propaganda. I mean, that's, that's a harsh description to put on Wikipedia, but at least a lot of the political articles read that way now. But that's because they follow the news media, at least they have done in the last 10 years or so, 10 or 15 years. They've gradually gotten rid of all of blogs, and then more recently they've gotten rid of almost all conservative news sources as, uh, as sources for their articles. And so as the news media has shifted, and as the establishment, frankly, has shifted more to the left, the content of Wikipedia has, has followed suit. It would, would have been hard for me to accept that this would happen and that it would be so striking. Mm. Even 10 years ago, I mean, already there was this decline into the slide to a center-left point of view by 2010. Another thing you told me um, when we were speaking in the past is you see a kind of mob rule on Wikipedia. And so I, I, presumably that wasn't the intent. So, yeah, this is hard. Um, it's collaborative to, to begin with. And wikis, before, Wikipedia isn't the first wiki, first of all. The wiki software was invented in about 1995. And there was this, this culture that was associated with wikis where people work together on pages um, and they, there's a lot of give and take and try to be fair to each other, try to be reasonable, and you reach a, a consensus view, essentially. So Wikipedia inherited that, that notion. Um, but ultimately, it didn't work. As soon as Wikipedia became very powerful, as soon as it attracted enough eyeballs, then uh, the ideologues moved in on both sides, frankly, in the beginning, for sure, and, uh, and, and went to battle, right? You, you can't have a consensus among people who are, you know, ideological enemies. One side is ultimately going to win unless there's a really strong neutrality policy. And ultimately what, what happened was the neutrality policy that the enforcement of the neutrality policy essentially collapsed and one side did win. If people are trying to come to an agreement with each other, but there is no set way of resolving their editorial differences other than just talk, right? There's de facto a power vacuum. And what developed in, in the absence of any sort of established editorial apparatus, any sort of hierarchy, any sort of decision-making process of any sort, what happened was certain people gained more influence. They had more friends within the community. And a kind of behind-the-scenes game developed, and, and a certain people just mastered the game better than others. And they had more friends. They said the right things, and they were able to get more people on their side. That kind of describes what happens when there is a mob rule and when there's a power vacuum. I think that's essentially what happened. But then it, it descended to even further an authoritarianism. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a free-for-all anymore. It used to be, right? Um, 
back in 2003, 2005, even as late as like 2009, in, on some pages anyway, it was kind of a free-for-all. You could go in and you know, just start shooting off your mouth and people would engage in debate with you for days sometimes. It doesn't work that way anymore at all, for sure. It, um, if, you, if you just have the temerity to make a few small edits on certain popular articles that haven't been locked down completely, you can be, you know, booted off the project entirely, um, in the wrong circumstances anyway, and <laughs> people have complained to me about that happening. Um, it's not a welcoming sort of place at all. I call that authoritarian, right? Um, there are a, a few people who have um, admin administrative permissions in the system, and basically they use that to make sure that only the right sorts of people contribute to their articles. Um, only you, you have to agree with them, you have to butter them up, you have to say the right things, uh, and, uh, and toe the party line, essentially. Sometimes literally the Democratic Party line, but this I have heard applies just as well in other languages with other, you know, political parties. 